Oh man, the stock market is just, it's just such a funny place. You know, the stock market is such a representation of life at the end of the day. Uh, there's certain things that go on and just like in life, you, you know, people do very, very questionable things and you're like, what are you thinking, man? Like, why did you make that decision? Oh, the stock market could be such a representation of life. And uh, I have so much to show you guys in today's video. Uh, I always feel like it's my job to kind of bring you things to your attention that are going on in the market that you aren't going to see on the, the front page stories, right? And I have some of those things to share with you guys in today that are going to absolutely blow your mind. I got some Warren Buffett stuff to share with you guys here today. Oh, it's just going to be a, a, a good video, okay? Let's just put it that way. Alrighty, so first off here, obviously, a uh, great day in the market. Dow was up huge, 800 plus points. NASDAQ made a massive move up 3.3%. S&P 500, 3%. Russell had a good day, 3%. Uh, Ethereum, Bitcoin, all those are doing very well today. Even gold eked out a gain, which you know it's a good day when gold ekes out a gain, all right? Now, First up here, look at this. So look at this, okay, SQQQ, which reflects the triple inverse or negative 300% of the NASDAQ 100 saw assets under management rise to an all-time high of $4.1 billion last week. This is essentially people betting against the market that think the market's gonna go down. This went to an all time high last week of 4.1 billion, but not just betting that the NASDAQ's gonna go down. It's basically betting the NASDAQ's gonna go down massively, right? And they're like super shorting it. Shows a lack of conviction in the market investors are selling the rallies now versus buying the dips. And uh, it shows you that just sentiment in the stock market is overwhelmingly bearish right now, like overwhelmingly bearish. When people wanna go, you know, a triple inverse on the NASDAQ, and it's hitting an all-time high of assets under management, you know people are just ultra bearish at this moment in time. And it, it makes you think, wow, you know, what we came first, the chicken or the egg? Is it the fact that as of last week, the NASDAQ was down 33 plus percent? Is that what makes people all of a sudden ultra bearish? Is it what's going on in the economy? Um, have folks even thought about the, the, the possibility that a lot could be priced in when you get the NASDAQ already down 33 plus percent, right? Um, just very, very interesting, right? We'll dive into that more. But look at this. This is shocking. So two straight weeks. This is the newest numbers out of the AAII investor sentiment. Two straight weeks now, less than 20% of investors in the market are bullish on the stock market the next six months, less than 20%. When you get that to happen two straight weeks, it's insane, okay? The historical average is 38% of investors are, are bullish on the market over the next six months. So the fact that we're less than half of that two straight weeks is like literally mind blowing. Not only that, the amount of people bearish on the stock market over the next six months went to a new, uh, uh, you know, almost a new 52 week high, but one of the highest numbers you'll ever see. Almost 60% of investors are, are basically bearish on the market over the next six months. So, what this shows you is just people are overwhelmingly bearish. They don't believe in the market at all in the next six months. They believe it's just going to go down, down, down. No one thinks the stock market's going to go up the next six months. Well, I shouldn't say no one. 18% of investors actually think the market's going to go up over the next six months. So we're at a moment in time in history right now where just everybody thinks this just doom, 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 doom for the next six months at least, right? And, um, you know, I've seen it so many times where the market just, the market just does the complete opposite of what everybody's betting on, essentially, and we'll talk about that more later in this video. Look at some moves out here today. You know, there's seven, or excuse me, there's five stocks alone that I personally own that were up more than seven percent today. Just insane. When I own that, my dividends only account that was a twelve percent mover today. Honest is a stock I've been buying insanely heavy the past six months. This one made almost a ten percent move. Uh, Palantir, which is a stock I literally just bought in the past week, this one made a seven point seven percent move. Meta made a 7% move here today, and the chef made a 7% move. Just some extraordinary moves on a day like today, right? Palantir, I just bought this one recently, and I'm like, why didn't I buy more shares? But I mean, you know, that should always be the goal. Like, you should always have that feeling inside of like, why didn't I buy more shares, right? Uh, but but Palantir just bought this one. It's already 32.5%. I've held this stock for like a week. Like, it, it's such a short amount of time. Like, But when you get a little bit of risk on in the market, 
you know, these stocks absolutely fly. And this is what I always try to tell people. I'm like, if you get a few months of risk on, never mind if you get like a six month span, you know, you'll see stocks go up 50%, 100%, 150%, 200% in a snap of fingers. Look at this. This isn't like a week. They didn't come out with earnings. It was no massive news with Palantir in the past week. And this stock just moved up 32 plus percent. And it's not the only one. There's a lot of those type of stocks out there, right? The banking stocks, something interesting happened with these here, Dave. And that interesting thing is the fact that Wall Street finally wanted to buy Wall Street. Wall Street's been holding off on buying the banks. But here today, here we are. You know, all these stocks moving up very nice. Wells Fargo, 7.5%. Goldman Sachs, almost a 6% move. Ally uh, Bank, 5% move. Deutsche Bank, 4%. JP Morgan, 3%. Now, here's what you got to keep in mind with when it comes to the banks. The banks are all going to be reporting earnings uh, within the next essentially two to three weeks. Okay, the banks are always the first ones to kick off earnings season. So in the month of July, the banks are going to be what kicks off earnings season. Likely in the second week of July, you'll start to see that. So here we are in a moment in time where Wall Street's all of a sudden wanting to buy up the banks, and you know Wall Street should know how Wall Street's doing. Like, like just think about this logically for a minute. Like if there's, they almost have like inside information. Like these folks work for these big banks and these big institutions. Like they see what's going on. All their colleagues all work for different departments in the bank. So like they should have the most knowledge of what's going on inside the banking sector, right? And so it's just interesting to see all of a sudden, here we are just a couple of weeks before these bank earnings start coming out. And all of a sudden Wall Street wants to start buying up Wall Street again, right? So... I don't know. We'll have to see. But obviously, if you want to know about the global economy, you're going to find a lot of information from the banks, not just in terms of their last quarter, but in terms of what they're guiding for or how they think business is going right now, right? Uh, before we get into the core of this video, I want to make sure to shout out FTX US, the official crypto partner of the channel and the official stock brokerage now of the channel because uh, FTX just got into the stock broker space as well, which is absolutely amazing. Really in excited for what they do there. They just made an acquisition in that space as well. Uh, FTX FTX has among the lowest fees out there you'll find from companies trusted by millions of users. You can set it up right on your phone where you can essentially do recurring buys of different assets if you want to do that. Like let's say you want to buy $20 of a certain asset each and every week or each month or something like that. You can absolutely do that. You get free crypto with every trade over $10. If you use my referral code, holy smokas, you can get up to $100 in crypto. And that will be pinned comment down there. Enjoy that. There's a lot of awesome features FTX has and I'm excited for what they do in the stock brokerage space over, overall. Uh, Sam from FTX has been a, a savior in the crypto space, to be quite honest. Uh, a lot of these companies, you know, other companies, I don't know if they would have made it without Sam. He's really trying to pull through. So yeah, definitely enjoy that, guys. Check out pinned comment down there. And uh, once again, don't forget to use referral code Holy Smokas. Alrighty, so ARK Invest is up 25% in nine trading days. You just get a little, a little, little bit, a little bit of excitement in the market, right? Not even a lot, just a little bit. And that, that baby just spikes up 25%. That's just the way it works. And, and Tark is now up over 50% in the past nine trading days, over 50%, right? And so these are just the, the moves that happen when you can get a little risk on in the market. And, you know, if you don't like Kathy Wood stocks or you don't like ARK, Ark Invest or whatever, right? At the end of the day, the market goes risk on, ARK is going beast mode. And if the market goes risk off, the ARC's getting destroyed more. That's just, it's, it's literally as simple as that. It actually has nothing to do with the, the company's underlying performance or something like that because they're so diversified in so many different stocks. It's like risk on, ARC, psh, risk off, ARC, psh, you know, that's just, it's, it's literally as simple as that when it comes to ARC Invest. Now, this is interesting, okay? Oil and gas stocks actually rallied today along with the markets and including a couple outperformers. ConocoPhillips outperformed and Shell outperformed here today. And basically how this has been working recently with the oil and gas stocks is when the market has been green, these babies have been red. When these are, these are green, the market's red. So it's interesting today we had such a strong rally that it brought almost everything along with it today. Like, like literally if you pull up a heat map, like almost everything was in the green here today. Look at these moves from travel stocks. Oh my gosh. You gotta be flipping my flapjacks. Royal Caribbean, almost 16% move. Uh, CCL Carnival, a 12% move. Win 12% move. By the way, CCL, that was like seven bucks or so just recently. So that's like a 30% mover there. Um, MGM, 11.3% move. Airbnb, 8%. United Airlines, 7.5%. American Airlines, 7%. Hawaiian Airlines, 6%. Delta Airlines, 5.5%. I mean, 
geez, these moves are just extraordinary. And you know, when I see some of these moves, this violent like this, you know what it also, you know what it makes me think. I start thinking because if you look at the market, right? You have the longs over here and you have the shorts over here. And when I see these sorts of moves, what I think is, I wonder how much of that action is short squeeze versus just longs coming in to buy those stocks today. Like I look at a Royal Caribbean up almost 16% today. And I'm like, how much of that action was, was longs coming in to buy up Royal Caribbean versus a shorts that are getting squeezed and they're like, crap, I got to cover. And when you're a short, you got to cover, you got to buy back the shares because that's just, it's such a ridiculous move. It's like, come on, man. Like it has that, that, that has squeeze almost written all over it. And we saw some of the most insane short squeezes we've ever seen actually coming out of the March 2020 uh, crash in the market. Some of those short squeezes were beyond epic. I mean, you know, everything had just gotten so devastated. We, the market went down like 30, the S&P 500 went down like 34% in a matter of like, oh gosh, what was that? Uh, 20 something trading days or something like that. It was the fastest drop we ever seen in the market. And then as we squeezed and came out of that, I mean, it was like day after day after day, you would see these, these stocks move 5, 10, 15, 20%. And uh, the squeezes were epic. There was, a lot of people got off sides, you know, were all of a sudden betting super heavy against the market because it was like, oh, the economy is going to be closed for three years. And everybody was so off sides in that situation that the squeezes were ridiculous. And uh, I, I don't want to predict we're going to go through any sort of situation like that right now, but I can tell you. Some of this pricing action reminds me of those days when everybody was off sides in the market and all of a sudden you got some momentum coming in on these way oversold stocks and uh, the shorts were just way over short and next thing you know, boom, 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 the moves were ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. Oats, oat futures are down 25% here in a very short amount of time. All my fellow Oatly shareholders, this is something we definitely like to see, um, especially as you think about the back half of this year and really into 2023, we need to see oats continue to go down. That would be good for margins and getting the company co closer to profitability. This is interesting. Safety stocks. Look at these stocks. My safety watch list, every single one of these stocks underperformed the market today except Mr. Softy. Microsoft was the only stock that outperformed the market today. Everything other than that stock underperformed the market today. Like, just look at that. It's, um, you know, it's, it's crazy because a lot of these safety stocks haven't even been doing good when the market's going down. Never mind that. All of a sudden, you get an exciting day and you get, what, underperformance from all these stocks? It's, like, it's just a very disappointing space at, at the short term here, okay? Now, this is extraordinary. This is extraordinary. Look at everything I drew out here, okay? What this shows you is this shows you the NASDAQ over the past year. Now, the NASDAQ hit an all-time high of 16,000 plus basically in November, okay, oh, November 2021. Now, during that time, traders were overwhelmingly bearish, uh, bullish. If you look at the uh, AAII investor sentiment, traders were overwhelmingly bullish on the stock market for the next six months. They were, you know, very few of them were, were bearish compared to bullish. And the, we had near $1 trillion in margin debt at that time, near $1 trillion, right? Which means if you're taking out all the margin debts because you believe the market's going to go beast and all of a sudden NASDAQ 20,000 or something, right? The market was at all time highs and you had all that going on, overwhelming amounts of bullishness, hardly anybody bearish, trillion dollars of margin debt, and market at all time highs. Now, what ended up happening was over that next eight months, the NASDAQ ended up falling 33, 34%, okay? Into where it was last week. Then you have traders all of a sudden overwhelmingly bearish, <laughs> near all time high levels of, of bearishness, right? Like literally in the investor sentiments, if you look at, uh, you know, just about anything. I mean, SQQ, all these are at all pretty much all time highs in terms of how many people are wanting to bet against the market and things like that, right? SQQQ hits all time high of assets under management. And if that doesn't tell you, it's almost like you ever heard the expression like uh, buy high, sell low. That's what this reminds me of. Buy high, sell low. Like it should be you buy, buy low, sell high, right? But it reminds me of that situation where it's like, let, let's be ultra bullish. Let's, let's, you know, go to the moon. And then when things actually drop to the floor, it's also in bet against the market. And at all time high levels, when the NASDAQ's already fallen 33, 34% in a matter of eight months. And it's just like, oh gosh, man. Like seriously, like this, this is what we're doing. This is what we're doing now, man. This is what we're doing. Come on. Like that's the stock market for you. That's it. it the saddest part of this is people never learn. People never learn because 
This story, what we're seeing play out in front of ourselves right now, is the same story that plays out every time. Literally, in the great financial crisis, literally the week before the market turn, we saw the highest amount of people bearish on the stock market for the next six months that we've ever seen in the history of that sentiment. 70%. I mean, we're at an insane number right now, 59%. 70% the week before the market turned. The week before. And so this is just, it's just history playing out the same way again and again and again. People get so ultra bullish. We're going to the moon and the market just tanks. Everybody loses all hope that the market can go up and we'll see what happens. That's all I'm going to say about that. But when they lose all hope, they want to bet against the market. They want to short stocks. They want to bet on these inverse ETFs at an all time record level. These things go to all, the, the biggest assets under management they've ever seen. And it's like, oh my gosh, man. The, the story plays out the same time. The same thing happened in Rona. The same thing happened in the great financial crisis. The same thing happened in the tech bubble. Every single time it plays out the same way. It's just, it's a different bunch of things that get you to that place of ultra bullishness. It's a different bunch of things that get you that that level of ultra bearishness. But in terms of the price action, in, in the way this plays out, it's the same thing again and again and again. And the saddest part is, this is going to play out just like this again in the next big crash. You're going to have some sort of insane bull rally. Everybody's going to get ultra bullish. They're going to be you know going crazy on margin and call options and all these things to get absolutely wrecked. Then everybody's going to lose all faith. And it's all, oh, it's going to zero and the market's going to go on a beast mode run. It's just, it's the same thing. And I just, I, I just sit back with my popcorn ready, right? As a long-term investor in the market, I keep it simple. I see assets that I believe are very undervalued. I buy those assets and all this stuff is fun to watch. And oh my goodness, this person's making this bet and this bet and this bet. I just sit back with my popcorn. I buy stocks I love for the long term, put them in the filing cabinet and uh, call it a day, right? You know, this is a great, great saying from Warren Buffett here from the 2004 Berkshire Hathaway chairman letter. He says, investors should remember that excitement and, and expenses are their enemies and they insist on trying to, and if they insist on trying to time their participation in equities, they should try to be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. But the, the problem is no one, almost no one, I don't say no one, but almost no one is really practices that. Almost no one is ever actually greedy in the market when everybody's ultra scared. It's very, very few. It's like this amount of like this amount, okay? Almost no one has ever actually practices that. What happens is almost everybody, when the market's at all time highs and everything's going to the moon and it's euphoria, is, is placing call option bets and, and you know margining and all these things. And then when you get these opportunities where the, the NASDAQ goes down 30, 40, 50%, you, where are the buyers at? And all of a sudden, it's like, no, nah, we're we're gonna we're gonna bet against this thing. Let, let's go S Q Q Q Q. And it's just like, but that's the way it always plays out. It sounds great in theory to be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. But the fact is, the amount of people that actually do this is an extremely small amount, and the amount that do the opposite of that, unfortunately, is a massive amount. And that's why the stock market, you know, is, is some, is some look at this and they, they have trouble, you know, understanding it. They have trouble having faith in it because they fall into the same traps that everybody before them fell into. They get ultra bearish when everybody else is bearish and the market's already gotten destroyed and they get ultra bullish when everybody else is bullish and the market's at all time highs and it plays out the same way. And guess what? It's going to keep playing out the same way. So the goal for all you guys out there is to be the difference maker in that and not fall into these sorts of traps. And, you know, when you see the NASDAQ down 30, 40, 50 percent, you've got to be a buyer out there because you get very few of those opportunities out there in the market. And, yeah, it might go lower next month or, you know, three months from now. Who cares? As long as you're getting a good deal in that stock, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. And the rest is conversation. And be very careful when there's ultra euphoria in the market and everybody's buying and margin debts at all-time highs and call options are at all-time highs and everybody wants to become a millionaire in the stock market tomorrow. When you're in those moments, you got to be very, very careful in the market. And that might be times to stack cash a little bit, right? So anyways, guys, much love as always. Hope you enjoyed this. I appreciate you joining me. Don't forget to smash. And have a great day. Also, take advantage of the FTX US deal that will be pinned comment.